3. Eye Atlas has just passed its closest approach to Earth, and what we're learning now is raising more questions than answers. In fact, the latest update may be the most puzzling one yet. Just days after the flyby, scientists released new calculations about the object's true size, and those numbers don't just disagree with earlier estimates, they completely overturn months of assumptions. On December 23rd, researchers published revised measurements suggesting that 3i Atlas is far smaller than previously believed. This conclusion came from analyzing something called non-gravitational acceleration. In simple terms, this is the extra push a comet experiences when gas escapes its surface, acting like a tiny thruster in space. It's not gravity pulling the object, it's the comet pushing itself. For 3i Atlas, this acceleration was measured at approximately 89.3 times 10 to the negative 9th astronomical units per day squared. That number sounds abstract, so here's what it really means. Every single day, the object speeds up by roughly 13 kilometers per day more than the day before. Now, 13 kilometers per day might sound impressive, but in cosmic terms, this force is unbelievably small. It's about 1.5 millionths of Earth's gravity. Almost nothing. And yet, thanks to ultra-precise tracking from hundreds of observatories across the world, scientists can detect even this microscopic nudge. So how does this tiny push tell us how big the object is? It comes down to physics. The strength of non-gravitational acceleration depends on two measurable factors. How much material is being ejected per second and how fast that material is moving when it leaves the surface. Fortunately, we have direct measurements of both. The James Webb Space Telescope observed the gas escaping from 3i Atlas and determined that it's traveling at about 1,600 kilometers per hour. At the same time, scientists estimated the total mass loss rate to be roughly 150 kilograms every second. With those two values in hand, researchers asked a critical question what size object would produce this exact acceleration given that level of outgassing? When the math is done, the answer comes out surprisingly small. The calculations indicate a diameter of around one kilometer, more precisely, somewhere between 800 and 1,000 meters, assuming standard comet properties. That assumption matters because comets are not solid rocks. They're more like cosmic snowbanks Typical comet density is about 500 kilograms per cubic meter, roughly half the density of water. They're porous, fragile, and filled with empty space between chunks of ice and dust. Using that density, the new calculations suggest that 3i Atlas has a total mass of around 260 billion kilograms. One kilometer wide, 260 billion kilograms. That's the picture painted by the December acceleration data. And if that were the whole story, things would be straightforward. But it's not. Because earlier this year, from May through September, a completely different picture emerged. During that five-month period, 3i Atlas was tracked relentlessly by more than 230 observatories worldwide. These weren't casual observations either. The positional accuracy reached about 0.028 arc seconds. To put that into perspective, that's like spotting a coin from over 100 kilometers away. With precision like that, scientists were watching for any sign of non-gravitational acceleration, and they found none, not even a hint. Now, it would be easy to assume the signal was just too faint, but that explanation doesn't hold up. The detection threshold during those months was about 300 times more sensitive than the acceleration measured later. In other words, if 3i Atlas had been experiencing even a fraction of the recent push, it should have been obvious in the data. But the object moved as if no extra force was acting on it at all. And that changes everything. Because if the acceleration truly was below detection limits during that time, then 3i Atlas must have been far more massive than the new December estimate suggests. A heavier object experiences less acceleration for the same outgassing force. Harvard astrophysicist Avi Loeb previously ran the numbers based on this exact scenario. His conclusion was striking. If the acceleration was below the observational threshold, then 3i Atlas must weigh at least 33 trillion kilograms. That's 33 billion tons. At standard comet density, that mass corresponds to a diameter of at least 5 kilometers, which matches the size estimate scientists had been repeating for months. 
So now we're faced with a direct contradiction. The December analysis says 1 kilometer and 260 billion kilograms. The May through September data demands at least 5 kilometers and 33 trillion kilograms. That's a five-fold difference in size and a mass discrepancy of more than 120 times. Both conclusions are based on solid data. Both use accepted physics, and yet they cannot both be correct at the same time. So, what's going on? There are several possible explanations, and none of them are trivial. The first involves revisions to the acceleration measurements themselves. Since the initial papers were published, NASA scientists have repeatedly updated the non-gravitational acceleration values as they refined their models and corrected for observational uncertainties. Each revision slightly reduced the estimated acceleration. If the true acceleration is lower than the value used in the December calculation, then the inferred size of 3i Atlas would increase. That alone could push the diameter upward and begin closing the gap between 1 km and 5 km. The second possibility is mass loss over time. Between May and September, 3i Atlas was far from the Sun and relatively cold. Its surface activity would have been minimal. By October, however, it was approaching perihelion, absorbing far more solar energy and shedding enormous amounts of ice and dust. If the object lost billions or even trillions of kilograms during that heating phase, then it would have been significantly heavier earlier in the year. That would explain why the earlier observations implied a much larger mass, while later measurements point to a smaller one. The third explanation involves asymmetric outgassing combined with rotation. Comets don't release gas evenly. They have active regions, jets, that erupt from specific locations on the surface. The effect of those jets depends entirely on their orientation. From May through September, it's possible that the active regions were positioned in such a way that the thrust they produced was perpendicular to the comet's orbital path. That kind of acceleration would not show up clearly in standard position tracking. Then, as the object rotated and its thermal environment changed closer to the Sun, those same jets may have reoriented. Suddenly, the thrust aligned with the trajectory, producing measurable acceleration in October. This behavior is not unusual. We see similar effects in many comets within our own solar system. The fourth factor lies in the assumptions built into the models themselves. The calculations assume a density of about 500 kilograms per cubic meter and a certain degree of symmetry in the outgassing process. Small changes in either assumption can dramatically alter the final size estimate. If 3i Atlas is slightly denser than typical comets, or if its jets are far more directional than assumed, the 1 km estimate could increase while the 5 km lower bound decreases. In that case, both values might converge somewhere in between. And that brings us to the bigger picture. This is an active area of research. New data is still coming in. Acceleration values are being refined. Models are being adjusted. Scientists are trying to determine which combination of these factors best explains the observations. This process, revisions, corrections, competing interpretations, is not a failure of science. It's how science works. What makes this situation especially difficult is that 3i Atlas is an interstellar object. We've never studied a visitor from another star system in this level of detail before. Many of the assumptions we rely on are based entirely on comets formed within our own solar system. But this object formed somewhere else. Its chemistry may be different. Its internal structure may be different. Its thermal history could span billions of years under conditions we don't fully understand. Scientists are learning in real time how to interpret data from something that doesn't quite fit our existing categories. And that's why this story is far from over. So, I want to hear your thoughts. What do you think explains the massive size discrepancy surrounding 3i Atlas? Drop your theories in the comments. If you enjoyed the breakdown, leave a like and some hype for the algorithm. God bless you, and I wish you a very Merry Christmas.